Hey guys, sorry it took me so long to post a video. Unfortunately, on day one of the new year, I failed my new year's resolution. Don't get COVID. That's right, I'm one of the hordes of infected people in New York City that you keep hearing about. Now, I'm feeling a little better now, but oh boy, you thought reading the news was hard normally. Try doing it with brain fog. Anyways, to the news! Now, to pass a voting reform bill, senators first have to do a bit of voting reform for the Senate itself. Enter the filibuster, the easiest way of pretending to be busy while accomplishing absolutely nothing since I learned that Bomberman could run on my calculator. Boy, he's just calculating up a storm over there. Now, in the Senate, similar problem. I know it looks like nothing is getting done, but who oh boy, they're just negotiating up a storm over there. Now, the filibuster is so comically representative of a messy bureaucracy that even the New Yorker would say it's a little too on the nose for their cartoon section. We're gonna hold a vote on whether we're gonna hold a vote or not. Get this, it actually even takes more votes to vote for a vote than it does to pass the dang thing in the first place. And now what this means is politicians can make a whole bunch of promises and just spin their wheels during the campaign, and despite winning a majority in both houses of the congress, not accomplish much of anything that they promised. Oh, you voted for us because you wanted a border wall? Well, despite having both houses of congress and the white house, we don't have enough of a majority for that. Oh, voting rights? Well, now we're the guys in charge of everything. But again, not by enough. Our hands are tied, unless of course it comes to long fruitless negotiations getting everyone just hopping mad and generating those sweet sweet votes, or just quietly overfunding the military and corporate handouts. You know, the bipartisan non-controversial stuff. Now, the strangest thing to me is, whichever party's in power always says, alright, we're gonna get down to business and get rid of the filibuster. While whichever party is the minority says, whoa, 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 hold your horses there for a second. One election later and you can get whiplash with the positions. The exact same people are singing the exact opposite tunes. Now this thing is still around because whichever party is in power in the senate at the moment is so scared of what the other party is going to do when they get power that they just prefer to drive with the emergency brake on full time around the capitol building. Now this, well, it's why we can't have nice things. Now that brings us to this week because oh boy things are heating up. Now the democrats are <coughs> are in power, they're trying to finish the job that Trump started, getting rid of or limiting the filibuster. This new filibuster fight has led to an outright confrontation with Schumer taking the position that we might have to get rid of or limit the filibuster a little bit, and Mitch McConnell coming out taking the position of defense. defense. Now the politics of this debate involve a little bit of game theory. And I want to work backward from each individual's goals to explain the posturing. Now, first, luckily for Democrats, the filibuster, well, it's not a law, but rather it's just a Senate rule. Now, that means that senators don't actually have to pass another law to change it. You don't have to worry about someone filibustering filibuster reform. Instead, you just need to get a simple majority of half of the senators getting together and looking around saying, you know what? Yeah, not a fan of this rule. Hand me my sharpie, I'm feeling creative. So okay, you need 50 votes in the senate to change the filibuster, and democrats majority is exactly 50 seats. Sounds like a match made in heaven. Well, unfortunately, the Democrats might control 50 seats, but they don't control 50 senators. Several of the more moderate Democratic elements have split off to actually defend the filibuster. It happens every time this comes up. So what to do, what to do? Well, you could get in a time machine to 2018 and recruit some Republicans. Hey, 
Hey guys, rolling back the filibuster is still the cool anti-bureaucracy thing to do in 2022. Or because the snowball in hell has better odds, you could try to hurt all those moderate Democrats on board your anti-filibuster movement. So how do you get moderate Democrats to vote against the filibuster? Well, you find a bill they really like, get Republicans to filibuster it, and then force the hands of moderate Democrats to either overrule the filibuster or watch their bill fade into obscurity. Now let's face it, build back better? Not that bill. Hey Mashin, here's a bill you don't really like already, and to pass it we're going to have you vote against the filibuster, something you already don't want to do. Sound good? This crap sandwich cost $12.99. Interested? Ok ok, how about $7.99? Still no. So what bill would a mansion want to pass badly enough that he'd be willing to vote against the filibuster? Well potentially, enter Joe Manchin's very own voting rights bill. I think he might like this one, he wrote it. Now Chuck Schumer's game plan here is that this bipartisan bill, written in consultation with Murkowski and other more Republican moderates, is simultaneously so disliked by Republicans that it won't be able to get the requisite 60 yes votes it would need to bring it to a floor vote, and simultaneously so loved by Manchin and the other Democratic moderates that they would be willing to roll back the filibuster to pass it. Now this could even be the Joe Manchin bill to change the national sport from baseball to coal burning. As long as Manchin truly loves this bill and Republicans refuse to pass it, well Schumer is going to use all of his power to force the blocked vote so that Manchin will have to overrule the filibuster. As majority leader, Schumer is in charge of scheduling the vote, so he alone can really set the timer on this filibuster face off. Now of course Schumer isn't the only player in this game. We now have Joe Manchin, who has his own hand to play. You see, Manchin's plan is to simply have a bipartisan bill that, well, doesn't get filibustered in the first place. We're gonna have at least 60 senators vote to vote on this thing, and then have at least 50 senators vote to actually pass it. I consulted with a bunch of moderates when I wrote this thing, so they'll probably vote for it. We can get the requisite votes without anyone blocking it, so we don't have to change the blocking rules. Now I don't know how many times you have to have watched Miracle on Ice to get that level of delusional confidence, but he either thinks he can pull it off, or is just spinning his wheels in place. Look at how much work we're definitely getting done, because all this negotiating going on. And finally, we have McConnell, who's coming out swinging against both this voting rights bill and rolling back the filibuster. Now his threat against the filibuster is, essentially, if you repeal the filibuster, I'm going to become an even more effective politician and represent the promises that I made to my constituents. Republican leader Mitch McConnell issued a preemptive threat detailing a plan to force through votes on GOP sponsored bills if Democrats make even moderate changes to the filibuster. Those votes would include contentious subjects such as blocking vaccine mandates or stopping fracking bans. And yeah, if you don't have to first vote on whether you're going to vote for something or not, you could totally just bring those ideas up for a vote. From there, simple majority wins as to whether they get implemented or not. Efficiency cuts both ways. Still, it's a bit weird that the main threat you're bringing to the table is your ability to implement your mainstream legislative agenda in a timely manner. Now with Mitch McConnell coming out firmly swinging against this bill, it seems like the filibuster fight could soon come to an explosive head. Remember, Manchin needs 60 affirmative votes to choose to actually vote on this bill. That means, unless Manchin changes the rules, McConnell only needs to get 41 senators, of which he has 50 to pick from, to vote anything besides yes to this bill. You know, you could vote no, you could vote present, you could vote yeehaw, take your pick. As long as 60 senators don't say yes, blocked. 
we're about to see what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. And all I have to say is that is, I'd hate to be between them. Now before I enter the outro, I realize that I didn't actually dig into the voting rights bill at all in this episode. I just used it as like a football for this larger political game. It's pretty important. It's got some really interesting ideas dealing with problems like partisan gerrymandering, and it deserves at least one episode all to itself. If Russia doesn't invade Ukraine in the next few days, well, you can expect a part two from this channel going over the bill. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent non partisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.